Welcome to Electron course, Line. May not be sufficient. Maybe. Oh, man. I'm just babbling away. Let me start over again. And don't leave that in the video. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. I'm in trouble. All right, try again. Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're going to try and establish whether or not the system will accelerate, and if so, in what direction, and what will be the magnitude of the acceleration. Now let's start by saying, well, we're not sure what the direction of the acceleration would be if there's an acceleration. So we're going to take an assumption. We're going to start out by saying, what if the acceleration is in this direction? So we're going to work it out as if that acceleration exists. We're going to calculate the net force. And if the net force is greater than zero in that direction, then there will be an acceleration. So what we need to do here is we need to establish all the forces. And first of all, we have the force due to gravity, which acts straight down, mg. We have the perpendicular component, mg times the cosine of theta, and we have the parallel component, mg times the sine of theta. Then if we have the reactionary force, the normal force pushing back, and we know that the normal force is equal to the mg cosine of theta, which is the perpendicular component to the surface. Now for the friction force. Well, in our example here, we're assuming that the whole system will accelerate in this direction. And the direction of the friction force is opposite to the direction that the system will have if there was no friction. So if we assume that everything will accelerate this way, the friction force will be an opposing force Therefore, the friction force will be in this direction, which is the normal force times mu, and the normal force is mg cosine theta. So the friction force is going to be mg cosine theta. And in this case, what we're going to assume is that we're going to have the static friction. So mu sub s, because we need to get the motion started. We start from a stationary position, and we have to overcome the stationary kinetic friction or the static kinetic friction for the system to start accelerating. Based upon that, we now write the equation, F equals ma. And of course, in the case of a system, it's going to be the net force and the total mass. We can then solve this for the acceleration. The acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass total. And what is the, the net force? Well, the net force is equal to all the forces aiding the acceleration minus all the forces opposing the acceleration. And we still divide that by the total mass. So in this case, all the forces aiding the acceleration. Now notice, we're assuming the acceleration is in this direction. And so we have one more force over here. We have the m2g, the force of gravity pulling this block, and this should be called m1g, so we differentiate between them. This is m1, this is m2. So we have one force that's aiding acceleration, which is m2g. We have two forces that are opposing the acceleration. So this gives us m2g minus m1g sine theta minus and of course, I need to call this an M1 as well. This is an M1 right there. So minus M1g cosine theta times mu sub s, all divided by the total mass of the system, M1 plus M2. Now, if this quantity is positive, then we know there will be an acceleration. However, if this quantity is negative, then there will not be an acceleration because we wanted everything to accelerate in this direction. Negative means it's not going to accelerate in that direction, so we'll have to do the problem again, it's changing our assumption that we accelerate in the opposite direction, and then rework the whole problem from that perspective. So let's see what we get when we plug in the numbers. M2 is 2 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, minus M1, which is 5 kilograms, 9.8, times the sine of 30 degrees 
minus m1, again that's 5, times 9.8, times the cosine of 30 degrees, times mu sub s, which we said was 0 0.25, and the whole thing divided by m1 plus m2, which is 5 plus 2. Let's see if we get a positive quantity. 9.8 times 2 equals, that gives us 19.6 minus, that will be 49 times the sine of 30, that's 1 half, 49 divided by half is minus 24.5, and I can already stop because at this point, notice that this is larger than that, I'm going to get a negative quantity, but just for completeness, let's do that over there. So we have 49 times the cosine of 30, times 0.25 equals, so minus another 10.6, divided by 7. And I don't need to go any further because I realize that my acceleration would end up being a negative quantity, meaning that, no, there will not be an acceleration in the direction that I assumed. Now we're going to do this again in the opposite direction. So now we're going to assume that, well, we know that this is not true, so let's assume that maybe it'll accelerate in this direction. Now, if it accelerates in that direction, if both masses move in this direction, then the friction force will actually be in the opposite direction. So we get rid of this right here, and we can then say that the friction force, force friction, is equal to the normal force times mu, which is equal to mg cosine of theta times mu sub s. The magnitude of that will be exactly the same, as before, but now we'll be in the opposite direction. So now we do this again. We say that acceleration is going to be equal to the net force divided by the total mass, which is equal to all the forces aiding minus all the forces opposing the acceleration, all divided by the total mass, which is m1 plus m2. All right. The force is aiding. We now assume the acceleration will be in this direction. So this force no longer exists. It's now being replaced by this force. So we still have the m1g. Well, in this case, the force aiding will be the m1g sine theta. m1g sine of theta minus the friction force, which is the mg cosine theta times mu sub s, and minus the m2g, because that's also directed opposite to our assumed acceleration direction, which is minus m2g, all divided by the sum of m1 plus m2. Again, we want this to be a positive quantity. If it is not a positive quantity, then the, the system will also not accelerate in the direction assumed. So let's go ahead and figure out what this is equal to. It will be 5 times 9.8 times the sine of 30 degrees minus, oh, let's see here, that would be m1, wouldn't it? Yeah, m1, so that's m1, that is 5 times 9.8 times the cosine of 30 degrees times 0 0.25 and minus m2g, which is 2 times 9.8, all divided by m1 plus m2, which is 5 plus 2, equals, all right, that's 49 times the sine of 30 degrees, which is 24.5, minus, we have 5 times 9.8 times the cosine of 30 times 0.25, we calculated that here before, and that would be a minus 10.6, so far so good, minus 2 times 9.8 is 19.6, divided by a total mass of 7. But here again, notice, quick inspection tells us that 24.5 minus 10.6 minus 19.6 is less than 0. We get a negative acceleration again, which means that in neither case will the system accelerate to the right or the system will accelerate to the left. Therefore, we can say that there is no acceleration. The blocks will remain in place and they will simply not move, not accelerate in any one of the two directions possible. 
Again, the way we do that is we set up an equation where we calculate the net force divided by the total mass in an assumed direction. We then find the appropriate direction of the friction force, always opposing the assumed motion. And then you can see that if you end up with a negative result that way, a negative acceleration, that means that there's no acceleration in the direction assumed, and therefore the system will remain static. And that's how we do that.